I first learned about Western Carolina Rescue Mission probably early 2000. I was working at Bank of America, headed to California, started smoking crack, didn't make the flight, got here, um, heard about Asheville was a recovery town, came here, heard of, just kind of ran up on the mission, and um, that's how I found about, out about the mission, just kind of that way. Uh, once here, that was in 2000, I, um, I got connected with a, true, a church called the Body of Christ and uh, began to get involved with knowing the Lord better than I did as a kid. Um, my, re my recollection of Jesus Christ in my life was he was up there and I was down here and he always was trying to figure out how to keep me in line. And uh, he frowned when I made mistakes and I just, there was no, there was no, no such thing as a personal relationship. What the ministry does, I think more, most, the most important thing about the ministry is that we stress getting a personal relationship with Christ. It's different than A and NA. Is that if you get a personal relationship with Christ, everything else falls to the side. Whatever your addiction, whatever your problem, they fall to the side because Jesus becomes your number one dude. And so everything else pales in comparison. It doesn't mean that everything is cool. I was just talking to a young kid just now. I'm better in my relationship with Christ because I know who I am. I know that I'm a touchy-feely guy. I know that when people say things to me, I take it the wrong way. But I, I get certain kind of feelings when people look at me different, talk to me different, don't talk to me. I, feelings come up. But I recognize now that it's always about how it affects me. So I go to the Lord and I say, Lord, what's this about? And he says, Alvarez, you're still striving for man's acceptance. It's all about me. So, okay, Lord, yeah, it is. So let me give that to you, that worry to you, and I'll keep moving on. Um, the one thing about the ministry, I talk to the gentleman uh, when I'm here, because we have an overnight uh, guest who come and stay every night, at night. And I stress to them why rules are important. The people that give to the ministry give because we feed, we clothe, and we shelter. That's their main concern. We feed people that are hungry, we shelter people who don't have a place to go, and that thing. So when we, when we enforce rules like the ones we have, I try to impress upon that's how important it is. Also impress upon him that people that give here give because we don't get any federal or state or any funding. So little old ladies have been given for 20 some odd years, five and ten dollars a month. And they give just because, and they don't know us. We have, the people that come volunteer here don't have any personal investment in the, in, in, in the individual. They believe in the gospel, and they believe in Jesus Christ, and they believe in what the ministry does. So they give because of that. The heartbeat of the mission is Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ, uh, one of the things the, 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 the scriptures talks about is the poor will be with you, but we, we need to feed them because they're with us. We need to clothe them because they're with us. We need to shelter them. They will always be there. So the, the heartbeat is making sure that we take care, because Jesus said he came to save the lost, and the lost can, are not necessarily the homeless, but they kind of stick out for us. So what, that's what we do. We love on the homeless. Um, and that comes in all kinds. We have a prep ministry for the homeless. We have, um, what else for the homeless? A clothing closet for the homeless. We have three thrift stores. If a person comes in off the street, they can get a voucher for 10 items of clothes and one pair of shoes, no matter who they are. 10 items of clothes and one pair of shoes. Uh, I also impressed upon that with the three stores that we're having, and the way the ministry works is that People give items to those stores, and we can sell those items to make a profit. To because the electricity isn't free here, um, the water, the heat, the water isn't free here. The salaries around the mission isn't free here. So all of those things come into the insurance on the vehicles, and all of those sorts of things that come into impact the ministry. And how we because it takes a vehicle to go get the food that we bring. Uh, there are about 12 different um, organizations, from Outback to Olive Garden to. Um, Red Lobster, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, uh, Krispy Kreme, they give to the ministry. Trader Joe's, Harris Teeter, Food Line, they give to the ministry every week and that's how we're able to feed the hungry every night. We eat stuff like eggs every, every day, fresh eggs, grits, sausage, every day for breakfast. So the heartbeat of the ministry is to feed, clothes, and shelter. We have every evening, is from six to seven, is we have people that volunteer at the ministry. Again, they come to the ministry because we believe in Jesus Christ. So what they do, they come in and share their message. They may be Baptist, they may be Presbyterian, they may be non-denominational, but they come in and share the gospel. And what we try to encourage, now, when I talked to the gentleman before, because sometimes we have people who don't want to um, pay attention, I'll say. So I have to encourage them that for this one hour, 
I'm not trying to convince you to, 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 to join the faith, but I am convincing you that if you don't pay attention and be respectful, we're going to ask you to leave. So, uh, so the evangelism comes when people come into the and share every day from six to seven. And sometimes when volunteers come into the kitchen, they share the gospel with the people at the tables and who, the people who are volunteer here. So they share in those different ways. The discipleship program is about getting a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the main thing. Getting a person, and that comes by, we have different classes, uh, and we have a class every day from nine to 10. Uh, we have what we call sozo ministry, which we pray, the pray for individual disciples. And, but the main thing for the disciples is to get a personal relationship with Christ. That's the main thing, because one of the problems that we have when we come in is that we believe that most of the disciples believe that after about 60 days, they're ready to go back out to work. And I try to encourage them and say, listen, man, you spent 28 years stuffing down all your problems and your feelings. 60 days doesn't cure you of anything. So the main thing is to get a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a volunteer um, staff person who you, when you, you call her or call the front desk and there are volunteers for feeding, for working at the thrift stores, for working in women's ministry, for teaching classes. You can volunteer, you can volunteer in the clothing closet, you can volunteer at the thrift stores, you can volunteer to serve, you can volunteer to, 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 to give, of course, financially. You can volunteer to come in and speak, to give your personal experience. Uh, you can volunteer by giving clothes. Uh, there's all a myriad of different ways that you can volunteer. Because this is the only way I stay clean and sober. It's the only way I stay connected to Christ. Because my ministry, I, I automatically just have it in me to, to give back because it's been so freely given to me. So I support it because that's the way I stay connected to Christ by st stay reminding myself of the difficulty of it is uh, of staying sober and also difficult to stay connected to Christ because people believed in me when I continued to screw up. So I believe in others the same way. That the ministry will only survive if people still believe in each other. Uh, I think that there's a possi there's a, the, the possibility that people look at homeless people and people who are unfortunate and think that they don't care or they don't care about their lives. But I would say the most, the message I would continue to say is continue to believe in what the ministry does and your belief in it will be shown by how you volunteer and in terms of whether you give, volunteer your hours of time or, or, or your energies. If you know of a ministry that we need to know about, please give us a call, 888-641-8606 or take a look at our website, revelationstv.org.